Damage from today's tornado warning that brought heavy wind and rain to our area. 16 WAPT's Michaela Franklin is in Jackson where a tree is down on two homes. Michaela. Yeah, Keegan, you know, I don't know what it is about this neighborhood, but this isn't my first time in the Norwood subdivision. We're actually on Brownlee Drive, and this is the tree that's down on one home. Now, I wish I could say that this one tree only took out one home, but it actually took down two. This is the neighbor of uh, the tree, of who the tree belongs to, as you can see. It, it really is a massive tree just stretching out between two different homes. You can see it's down on uh, both corners of each home. The windows are and just still on the ground uh, that glass is broken. This is one of the bedrooms of the homeowners that live here and on the other side here you can see some of that insulation that roofing um, it's down. It is just down and, and this isn't the first time that this this uh, community in this neighborhood this subdivision here has been a victim of the storm damage. Now we did speak with one of the gentlemen that lives here. This is Mr. Uh, Dwayne Ellis. He says that this this neighborhood here has has been uh, victims of storm damage but he himself has actually never personally personally had a tree down on his home like this. Uh, how are you feeling right now, Mr. Ellis? A little bewildered. I mean, I, I feel right now the, um, this is surreal. Uh, you, you hear about it, you see it other places, other people, but to actually witness on your own home, to, um, to bear witness as it is right now, it's amazing. Uh, it's, um, it's an extraordinary sight. I, I mean, it's, it's imagining just being here would, would have been something totally different though. I mean, Mother Nature doesn't pick and choose who she's going to strike to, and you just never know when it's going to be you. Isn't that right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You never can tell. But you hear it all the time. You see you see this all the time. You knew that there was going to be the possibility of any wind damage or, or, I mean, it was a tornado warning at one point in time of day. So the possibility of thinking that, that yeah, someone else is going to get hit, something's going to happen, but you never really think about it being you. And now you have three trees here in your backyard. How are you feeling about S these trees? Standing under this, uh, this pine tree, oak tree right now, it's... Um, uh, it's a little scary. It it kind of it kind of reminds you that any time something could happen. Uh, I'm thinking real hard now about uh, getting removed. Uh, well, thank you so much, Mr. Ellis. We're going to check back in with you. And as he said, you just never know when Mother Nature is going to strike. I mean, you can just see this tree is just stretching out, and and it's not just the backyard of the house. Right now, we are standing in the backyard, but the front yard. When you look at it, it's just a. It looks like a massive bush is covering the entire house. And we'll just we'll check back in with you guys and just show you the full picture of the front and the back of the house. For now, we're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. We're live in Jackson on Brownlee Drive. Michaela Franklin, 16 WAPT News. OK, thank you, Michaela. And now let's head to North Flag Chapel Road in Jackson, where 16 WAPT's Grayson Gordon is standing by. Grayson, what are you seeing? Keegan, take a look at this. Neighbors over here on Flag Chapel Road tell us that lightning actually hit this transformer that you're looking at right here. And then a couple minutes later, it hit this tree as well, knocking off this branch. And you can see the branch is on the power line. And if you look down further, their power line is actually split in half completely. And so we'll hear from the resident who is telling us this story and what happened and what she recalled. One struck, you know, the transformer, we were still hit with power, not necessarily a surge. And then with the second one, which was, was, you know, two to three minutes later, you know, another big boom, you know, with the transformer. It sounded like a transformer, but I think it was actually the electrical cord, you know, a line on the tree itself. The resident tells us that this happened around noon and that firefighters did come out, but that she hasn't seen crews out here since then. And I've seen crews across the city of Jackson saying that there are plenty of trees down that they are working to get fixed right now. Live in Jackson, Grayson Gordon, 16 WAPT News. All right, thank you, Grayson. Yes, it was a rough uh, couple of hours around the metro area. Started about 11:30 and uh, moved out of the metro right around 1:32 o'clock. And uh, you can see right now uh, we have the uh, what's left of the showers and downpours now pushing over into East Mississippi. Right now, the worst of the weather is in the Pine Belt. We do have severe thunderstorm warnings stretching all the way from Marion County, Lamar County, through Hattiesburg, up into parts of uh, Clark County near the equipment area. This is moving over into Alabama. The good news 
news for our area is we are going to see quiet weather for the rest of the day. This has pretty much worked over the atmosphere and I don't expect any more severe weather. There could be some more showers that do redevelop, but other than that, we are looking at uh, some uh, much quieter weather moving in. Over now to the Lynx 1 system and I want to show you this uh, storm complex. It started this morning up here in uh, Oklahoma, moved through Arkansas, then raced across central Mississippi and right now it is now moving into parts of southeast Mississippi and towards the Gulf Coast and will be moving out into the Gulf of Mexico probably later on this evening. Want to update you on the power outage situation in the Metro Hines County. Currently 7900 customers without power. Rankin County over 1200 customers without power and Madison County over 2500 customers are in the dark right now and we take a look at the entire region and you see uh, Simpson County uh, over 800 customers without power. Warren County over 900 customers without power. Uh, Smith and Scott County about five to six hundred customers without power and even down here in Macomb almost 500 customers without power. Natchez too about 200 customers without power so they're was a lot of wind damage across the region did lead to power outages. The good news is we will be seeing quiet weather for the rest of the day and this evening. Keegan. OK, thank you, Adam. And for the latest on power outages, storm damage reports and updates to our forecast, just head to our website or download the 16 WAPT mobile app. We'll be back with the very latest at five.